Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Buckle up, make sure you're subscribed because I'm splitting $10,000 across 10 lucky subscribe beautiful bastards. And very awesomely, I'm excited to announce that the limited September beautiful bastard drop is here. You thought I forgot, I did in the 2022 exclusive Bringer of Sadness World Tour tee and hoodie. You got a beautiful bastard monkey tee and windbreaker. Keep going tie dye tee and hoodie. Get it for Halloween, the ghouls just wanna have fun gear. And for the first time in years, these six exclusive posters. There's limited and low stock in some of these. Two are signed in case you like like that sort of thing. And that's it, this is awesome. We're already trending for this to be the best drop we've done yet. So snag what you want while you can over at beautifulbastard.com. But let's just jump into it. I need you to quit lying to yourself and me and just admit that you're a fucking scammer. That is what people are saying to this gentleman right now. I didn't know who the hell this guy was until this weekend, but this is this is a standout story that matters to even people outside of this space. So this is Slicker. He's a streamer by all accounts, seems to be relatively liked and, and successful. That is until it was exposed that he essentially scammed people out of $300,000, with his victims ranging from super fan viewers all the way to other streamers. And if you shuffle through multiple screenshots, recordings, and testimony, it appears like this was his MO. He'd reach out, and if he didn't know you, he'd often ask, hey, how old are you? Because uh, seemingly he wanted to scam people, but not kids, so possibly there was a line in the sand for him, but he'd ask for a favor and then explain why he didn't have the money. Sometimes he claimed that his bank account or his PayPal was locked. Other times it could be because Twitch took forever to pay him. And often saying he needed money for something urgent, right? This isn't something we can talk about, please. I need to get on a plane to get back home, or I need to send my mom home to Iraq for a family emergency. Like really tugging on people's heartstrings. And like I said, Slicker reached out to everyone, fans, IRL contacts, and other streamers like Hassan Piker, Ludwig, K. Newton, countless others. And this motherfucker, some of the circumstances. In one case, he reportedly borrowed nearly $7,000 from someone who is saving money for their chemo treatment. That's an example of some of the people he was taking advantage of. And sometimes, you know, people did turn him down, which is apparently what happened with XQC and Maya. We had other big names facing major losses. Luke AFK fan, for example, took a $27,000 loss, while creators like Trainwreck, who does a lot of gambling streams, apparently once gave Slicker $100,000 to pay back debts. And I mentioned the gambling streams because that was the main thing here. Slicker was using this money to gamble. Right? The emergency wasn't that mama needed that flight back home. The emergency was that Slicker needed to put $10,000 on black. He felt it in his heart. That's what's gonna hit. And he was able to keep this all under wraps because he would ask his victims to please keep the request on the down low, explaining, hey, this is an embarrassing situation. Please just keep this between us. And we saw the likes of Hassan saying that actually worked even after he grew suspicious. I just didn't talk about it because I didn't know what the background was. I didn't realize it was because he had a gambling addiction. I, I legit thought he had like a family member with cancer or some shit. So I was like, ah, I don't, I'm not going to say anything yesterday. Like, I, I waited because I, I didn't know what the full details were. One of the reasons that we know about this and we can feel confident in the reporting is that beyond the screenshots and the video showing Slicker asking for money, how he did, is that he also pretty much admitted to everything, saying on stream yesterday. It's time for the truth. I used to gamble a lot of my money, uh, basically all my Twitch money. I And then even them times, I wouldn't even have them. I'm, I would come across streamers and ask them if I could borrow money. Obviously, they, I, I wouldn't give them the reason. Obviously, because it was gambling, I would lie to them. My initial thoughts was, I, I will be paying them back. I do want to say, I, my, I never intended in scamming anyone. And I will still pay off the people I owe. I don't give a fuck if I, whether I reach 90. And while we saw some people, such as Moist Critical, feeling sympathy for Slicker, pointing out that gambling addiction is a serious issue, even he didn't say that excuses what he did to all these people. And that's in addition to others who were far less sympathetic, right? We saw the likes of Asmund Gold saying, This is a fraud, and this is a person who's a thief, and they've stolen other things from other people as well. He deserves no sympathy at all, and anything bad that happens to him should probably be, uh, you should be thankful for it, that it wasn't worse. We've all seen some trying to help those who were scammed. Are you the likes of streamer XQC, who also has done gambling streams offering on stream to cough up 50% of the money to reimburse those who were scammed and asking if someone else would take the other half, which actually creator Ludwig has. But in addition to all this, right, you have Slicker claiming that he wants to do right by everyone that he screwed over. But you have people pointing to a call he had with Mizkif and Hassan, where he seems to be kind of flippant and joking. Or you have Hassan saying, you know, you just need to get back to work and you should spend more time streaming instead of taking days off to ask people for money. But to that, you had people saying it seemed like Slicker was just taking it all as a joke. It was too hot. No offense. Every time Hassan speaks, my ADHD kicks in. I'm not, not, not to be rude. I'm so sorry. And all this has kind of created a mess in the space. You had some big names like Justin Minks not happy about that call, feeling like it gave Slicker a platform that he didn't deserve, and adding, I hate them. And it might just be because I'm manic, but I also think that I'm not completely wrong. That Miz, Hassan, and now Pokey 
are fake bitches. Though, I will say it's not fully clear why Pokemon was thrown under the bus here. I mean, she has used the situation to renew calls to ban gambling from Twitch, but I mean, that seems kind of in line with what she's been saying. Tweeting like if Twitch should ban gambling and that actually getting, as of recording, over 278,000 likes so far. She's hardly the only one openly calling for this. Radio Gaming streamer and one of the minority owners of Team Liquid, Liquid Max, agreeing and writing, no hate to anyone that's making a bag because we shouldn't police each other, it should be Twitch, but I 100% think it shouldn't be a thing. There's a reason they're paying so much, just absolutely siphoning people of their money and the average Twitch viewer doesn't have a lot. And as Ben Gold chiming back in with, I don't think Twitch will ban gambling, is extremely pervasive and more socially acceptable than ever in the US. And adding the only thing that will make it stop is if people start killing themselves and or there's a mass media campaign against it that reaches advertisers. But also of note there, not everyone's on board, especially because of this specific situation. Right? Because the big caveat of, of linking these stories is that Slicker actively tried to hide his gambling from his stream and doesn't seem to have done it on camera. Even having turned down gambling sponsorships at various points. With Trainwreck, who's widely known for his gambling streams, also expanding on this idea, as well as bashing those calling for a ban. Tweeting, to be clear, people scapegoating slots, blackjack, and roulette, and not blaming the individual are the real problem. On top of that, Slicker was a sports betting addict. The one type of gambling that is normalized and that I don't hear a single one of you clout goblin fucks talking about. And seeming to say that the people who should be banned are people that present a false reality. Referencing people who hide all losses and only show wins. Calling things like that predatory. And we also saw others defending gambling streams by arguing, if we ban one thing, we should ban them all then. Vaping, subathons, energy drinks, energy sponsorships, gambling, drinking on stream in general, no white claws by the pool, hurting yourself on stream, saying bad words, nobody forces people to watch it or do it. So yeah, we kind of have a micro and a macro story with this one. And I'd love to know your thoughts on both of them. One, regarding Slicker specifically and what he did to all these people as well as gambling on platforms in general. And then, you know, everything that I thought I knew in the past about probiotics, it turned out to be wrong, which is why I want to thank the sponsor of today's show, Seed. Seed is the real deal. They combine a probiotic and a prebiotic to form their DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic, and it's designed to provide benefits beyond the gut. You know, I've been taking Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic for a while now, and I've noticed some major benefits to my health. My body feels great, and their unique two-in-one capsule and capsule design uses an outer prebiotic capsule that protects the inner 24 strain, 53.6 billion active fluorescent units probiotic through digestion past your stomach acid for 100% survivability into your colon. Most other probiotics actually die in your stomach, but Seed goes beyond gut health to help promote clear and glowing skin and heart health, but I have to say the most support I have felt is with my gut health. You know, maybe TMI, but since using it, like think healthy regularity, ease of bloating, and you know, if you've had the issues, you know the issues. And in your first month, you get this refillable glass jar, a travel glass vial, and a 30 day supply. After that, they send refills packaged with sustainable biodegradable materials. So go to seed.com slash DeFranco and use code DeFranco to get 15% off your first month's supply of Seed's DSO-1 plus free shipping. The biggest heist of the year happened over the weekend and it didn't even involve a single dollar. I'm talking about the Grand Theft Auto 6 leak. GTA 6, easily one of the most anticipated games in history, which makes sense. I mean, GTA 5 and GTA Online, one of the most successful things we've ever seen in that space. And Rockstar confirming the leaks this morning saying, we recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our system. And noting that what's out there right now includes early development footage for the next Grand Theft Auto. But noting here, they don't anticipate any disruption to their live game services, nor any long-term effects on the development of their ongoing projects. But also adding, we are extremely disappointed to have any details of our next game shared with you all in this way. So adding, we will update everyone again soon, and of course, we'll properly introduce you to this next game when it is ready. And so with this, I want to talk about a few things. One, if you're one of the people that saw this and you're like, oh my god, look at this trash, it looks unfinished. Yeah, it literally is unfinished. One of my favorite tweets that touched on this read, GTA 6 League gameplay so early in development that it almost looks like a finished Ubisoft game. You know, for me, I can't help but just look at this whole situation and think, this is like an L for everyone. Like for all the people who have been working so hard on this at Rockstar Games, I can't even imagine how fucked up this is for them. You and everyone around you are putting in your blood, sweat, and tears into this project. You you wanna you want the world to love it. And then some random takes some old shit and they throw it out there. And then for fans of the franchise, we get to see the worst version of what's gonna eventually come out. With it being very hard right now not to be bombarded by story spoilers. Though, selfishly, I count myself lucky. I have a horrible short-term memory. By the time this gets released in 2024, 2025, I'll probably have forgotten everything. Well, I'll also laugh at the memes of people being like, what does Rockstar expect? They taught us to steal. At the same time, I think it's incredibly shitty that someone leaked it like this. But yeah, hey, that's a story, my personal takeaway, and of course, I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts? Whether you agree with me or not, I'd love to hear from you. I may go to hell for mentioning this, but it's very true. The, the queen died, and many Brits responded by doing the most fucking British thing possible, 
queuing. As you may have seen over the weekend, you had immense numbers of people waiting for hours and hours to see the Queen's coffin, even for a few seconds, some of them being brought to tears, clinging to one another, weeping. But you also have others who oppose the monarchy or don't care or just support it, but simply have better things to do, frustrated by how this has disrupted their lives. Right, because last week, while we were talking about free speech concerns, people getting arrested, the King, King Charles, declared today a public holiday, leading to thousands of businesses voluntarily shutting their doors and events getting canceled. But we're not just talking about like restaurants closing. Oh no, I can't get a British breakfast, which by the way, slaps. Beans for breakfast? Why? Oh, because it's amazing? Thank you. But you even had hospitals taking a break, many canceling so-called non-urgent appointments previously scheduled for today. But then looking closer, it turned out that included things like knee and hip replacements, cataract surgeries, maternity checks, and even some cancer treatments. Which yeah, makes sense, because even cancer took a break today, apparently. And this really complicates things, because it's not like everything just moved back a day. You have people having to reschedule visits that they've been waiting months or years for. Hospital waiting lists are already clogged there with nearly 7 million patients needing appointments. Which is why we're seeing an outpouring for people like this woman who's eight months pregnant saying she had to wait three weeks to get an appointment at a specialized maternity unit. She's got type one diabetes. Her pregnancy is considered high risk. And her saying, when I was called and told all appointments that day are canceled, I got off the phone and cried. And another woman sharing her story saying, I'm a chemotherapy patient and have a COVID booster booked for the 19th, carefully timed around my treatment. Now it's canceled and I can't rebook for weeks. But this also goes beyond medical treatment. Apparently not only did cancer take the day off, but hunger with some actual real fucking food banks closing for the day, which has sparked outrage. And it appears that the queen's death has delayed others' deaths. Except not really. What I mean by that is that people who have dead relatives, they have been forced to reschedule their own loved one's funerals because of the disruption caused by the queen's funeral. And that's in addition to everything else being disrupted by the road traffic, irregular train service, childcare centers being closed. Even had Heathrow Airport disrupting some flights to ensure silence over central London as the queen's body was transported. But easily the most outrageous and disgusting of things that were canceled. And I try and say this without yelling. They have postponed Guinea Pig Awareness Week to next week out of respect for the queen. And I don't know about you, but I've been counting down the days. Like canceling cancer treatments, I get, but don't fuck with this little angel. The footage out of Puerto Rico right now is horrifying. Hurricane Fiona made landfall yesterday and it brought insanely heavy rains, flooding, landslides. It knocked out power for the entire island. We've already seen a death reported. You have photos and videos posted on social media showing floodwaters consuming major streets and engulfing cars. Some pictures have shown an entire bridge flooded, making it impassable, while other footage shows another bridge entirely uprooted and a metal barrier ripped away from the road and floating down a river of flood water. We don't even know how bad everything really is right now because conditions are still too dangerous for officials to fully evaluate the extent of the crisis. But we have seen in public remarks Puerto Rico's governor, Pedro Pierre Luisi, describing the damage as catastrophic, calling it one of the most significant storms since Hurricane Maria, which hit the island almost exactly five years ago to the day, which killed more than 3,000 people. And saying that some areas have had over 30 inches of rain and others have actually even gotten more more rain than during Hurricane Maria. Now, as of recording, Pierre Luisi has said that the National Guard has led 30 rescue operations so far, saving more than 1,000 stranded residents in 25 municipalities, adding that more than 2,000 people were in the island's 128 shelters, with officials saying there is plenty of space for those who need it. President Biden also approving an emergency declaration which will allow federal agencies to coordinate disaster relief. But in the meantime, Puerto Rico's Water Authority has confirmed that just over 70% of the island is still without water. And according to PowerOutage.us, more than 1.3 million customers were still without power as of this morning. Though the power company Luma has also confirmed that electricity has been restored to around 100,000 customers over the course of last night. But even that number comes a day after it warned that the full restoration of power could take several days as the storm has created incredibly challenging conditions. And to that point, while Hurricane Fiona has passed through Puerto Rico, it's now made landfall in the Dominican Republic with officials and experts saying that heavy rains and further flooding are still to be expected for the next few days throughout the region, and that includes Puerto Rico. And the National Weather Service even warning that life-threatening and catastrophic flooding, as well as mudslides and landslides, are expected to continue across the island. Which is why you also had Pierre Luisi urging Puerto Ricans today to remain home and in shelters so that officials can continue to respond to others in need. But ultimately, that is where we are right now, and we'll have to wait to see what happens. Because in addition to moving through the Dominican Republic today, it's expected to head towards Turks and Caicos tomorrow. And the National Hurricane Center has said that this storm will continue to grow, and by Wednesday, it's set to become a major hurricane, which means a Category 3 or higher. So please, please be safe out there. But ultimately, that is where that story and today's show ends. As always, thank you for watching and being subscribed to my daily dives in the news. Also, make sure, get in on the beautifulbastard.com drop now. Don't become one of the people that emails me and they're like, I missed it, please bring it back, and then I don't do it for like two to three years. But that said, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.